Welcome to another Bible study workshop where you're going to learn how to read the Bible with me. We're going to read along together and hopefully you'll develop some helpful Bible study skills that have tremendously helped my own faith and walk. We're in Proverbs chapter 2 and Solomon is offering wisdom to the son who's willing to listen and heed the voice of wisdom. So starting in verse 1, it says, my son, if you receive my words, this is helpful to do. Whenever I see the word if, it's usually going to note some kind of conditional statement, right? My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom, right? And inclining your heart, that's what verse 2 says, inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then... This is where we get into the result and what will happen if you meet the conditions in the first four verses. Then you'll understand the fear of the Lord and you'll find the knowledge of God. So here's what we need to do. Whenever you see an if-then kind of statement, it's helpful to understand what is the condition and what is the result of meeting that condition. So here's the result. If you want to understand the fear of the Lord, right? If you want to find the knowledge of God, right? We can reverse this. Then we're going to work our way back to each verse. Solomon says you need to seek wisdom like silver. You need to search for it as for hidden treasures. And notice the language used here. It's searching for it or seeking it out like it's silver, like it's something precious and valuable, right? It's searching for wisdom as if it's something that is hidden treasure, meaning it has to be unearthed and discovered and it requires work to actually like find. This means there's work involved in obtaining wisdom. You seek it, you search for it. In fact, what will be helpful is to square up every single time Solomon notes some kind of action that's required of us to find wisdom. The first action in verse four is seek it like silver, search for it as for hidden treasures, right? Back to verse 3, he says, if you call out, right? These are essentially all different ways of saying the same thing. If you call out for what? Well, for insight, for insight. And again, Blue's going to note what we're going to um, do, the condition required to actually understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God, right? Right? Instead of uncapping these each time, I'm just going to leave them open. Raise your voice. For what? For understanding. So, here we go. That's another condition. These are all essentially the same uh, thing being communicated different ways, right? In fact, let's just do this. Because I'm all over the place. I'm supposed to be teaching you how to read the Word of God and we're going backwards. Let's do it right. Starting in verse 1. Okay, if you see it, you see it says, my son, if, okay, you what? You receive my words. What is it that Solomon wants the wise son to receive? Well, he wants to receive, wants us or the listener, the reader to receive the words he has. He's specifically addressing the son, right? He goes, treasure up, which is another way of saying, receive my commandments within you. So it's interesting that so far, just in verse 1, and we know how it works out in verse 5, okay? We see that there are two so far conditions or different ways of saying the same thing. Receive the words of the wise man. Treasure up his commandments in ourselves. So it's interesting that receiving the words here is the same as treasuring up the commandments. In other words, his words here are his commandments. Okay, do you see that? When there's a list, and you're going to see that Solomon lists out here in four different verses all these different ways of saying the same thing. Receive my words, treasure my commandments, make your ear attentive to wisdom. When you see a list like that, it's helpful to take note of it, meditate on it. What do all these different elements have in common, right? Is Solomon essentially saying the same thing, commandments are his words? Yeah. How do you receive his words? He's going to say it a different way. Treasure up his commandments within you. So we're not just receiving something that tastes bad to us, or we're like, I don't want this, I don't have a heart for this. 
This is actually treasuring up something because you find it to be valuable, which is why in verse 4, you're going you're to see that Solomon says, seek it like silver, like search for it like hidden treasure, because it really is treasure. And you have to pursue it like it is treasure in order to become wise. You have to treasure up wisdom and have a value for it. That's how you receive the words he's given. Okay? He says, make your ear attentive, which is another way of saying what? Treasure up his commandments. Make your ear attentive. But this time, he says, hey, I'm talking about my wisdom. You know what's interesting is that my pen just broke, so I'm not going to use that one anymore. But... Here, the commandments and the words are referred to as wisdom. In other words, this is a callback to the Torah. When God gives commands to his people, he's offering wisdom for them to live by. And wisdom is what most honors God. Wisdom is what glorifies his name. Wisdom is what benefits people most. And that's found in the commandments of God or the words, the ten words, literally. Ten commandments are called the ten words of God given to Moses in Israel, right? So this is a call back to actually the wisdom found in the Torah, there's instruction there that, that Solomon has come to find out and discover. He's living it out, and he's saying, make your ear attentive to the wisdom I'm offering. And the wisdom he's offering is going to be consistent, not only with his own, what he sees as a command, but what God actually commands in Torah. These aren't just Solomon's commandments or Solomon's words. They're rooted in a knowledge and a, of God's truth and understanding of God's word. That's what makes Solomon so wise, and that's what makes his downfall so sad is that he had so much knowledge. He had so much understanding and information. So here's another way. Make your attentive to wisdom. Incline your heart to understanding. So again, another way of saying the same thing. Incline your heart, but this time, he says it's to understanding. And we'll put this all together. I'm just teaching you what to look for when you read, especially wisdom literature like Proverbs, where it's like you can get lost in the weeds and be so focused on the details that you forget there's a bigger thing going on, right? Same with narrative, same with the epistles, same with the gospels. Don't get lost in the details, but do pay attention to them because it actually helps magnify your understanding of the text. Okay, so there's a list here. He says, receive my words, treasure up my commandments, make your ear attentive to wisdom, which is a choice. You choose to listen or not, incline your heart to what? This time, the wisdom... The words, the commandments are referred to as understanding. Right there. He's offering understanding to people who are willing to incline their heart to listen. So it's interesting how verse 2 says, make your ear attentive. Here it's incline your heart. In other words, it's not just listening with the ear and the sound goes into my earlobes, right? It's, well, not my earlobes, but my, my ear. It's inclining your heart. The, the listening is actually done with the heart. Is your heart positioned to receive and listen and heed the understanding he's offering? Right? Because you can hear information, but is your heart inclined to apply it and actually like do something with it? Are you receptive to it? Yes, if you call out for insight. So now it's not just a passive position where you're just like, I'm ready for wisdom. You're actually calling out for it. You're looking for it. Verse one and two was receive, treasure up, be receptive. Verse three it's the same kind of idea, receive wisdom, but you're actually actively doing something. So, so notice when there's a list of things, or just notice uh, transitions within the scripture where ideas take on a different form. The first two verses are telling you what to do, the conditions you need to meet, but it's in a passive kind of way where your heart is ready, your ears are ready, right? Your, 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 the posture of your heart is ready to receive his wisdom. Here, you're actively going after, you're pursuing you're calling out for insight. You're not waiting for it to come to you. Now you're looking for it. So there's almost, so far at least in chapter two, there's two ways to receive wisdom. You can be ready for it when the opportunity arises, or you can go out and look for it as well. Raise your voice for what? Understanding. This is the same understanding he said in verse two, right? So when you see a word repeat within the same, you know, two or three verses, take note of it. He wants to give understanding, and he wants wise men and women to cry out for and want this understanding. If you seek it like silver, so now there's that active word. You're seeking it out because it's valuable. You're searching for it like it's hidden treasure because it is. And we know what happens when you seek out wisdom and you find understanding is that you will understand the fear of the Lord. And I want to pause here and, and, and want to look at this, okay? There's the fear of the Lord right here. Boom. We want this, 
But Solomon doesn't just frame up fear of God as something you attain and achieve. It's not something to be achieved by human effort and labor, right? You obtain it by the grace of God by going after it the way he wants, right? But it's not purely human labor that achieves it. It's actually God gives understanding through wisdom on how to properly fear him. So what is Solomon really offering? He's offering people understanding of how to fear the Lord, not just what fear the Lord is and not just this inherent fear of the Lord where I begin to tremble, but I understand what the fear of the Lord is. You can have something and not understand the full depths of it, right? You can obtain something and not really know how to make sense of it. Solomon doesn't just want to force the fear of the Lord down the throats of people. He doesn't just want to shove it into people's hearts. He is offering wisdom, understanding that gives fear of the Lord. But also, we need to understand how to fear the Lord. That's what the understanding here is. Wisdom is applying knowledge. Knowledge is information. Understanding is to know the logistics or the functioning, the why behind something. So in essence, Solomon is saying, fear the Lord. To understand the fear of the Lord is to go, well, why should I fear the Lord? How do I fear the Lord? That's the understanding he's offering in the wisdom that he's calling people to search for and seek after. Notice how this wisdom doesn't terminate on man. It actually finds its completion in God. It's the wisdom Solomon offers is pointing to God. That's what wisdom seems to be. And also, he says, when you search for wisdom, when you're open to wisdom, when you're humble enough to receive it, you won't just understand the fear of the Lord. You will find something. So notice the two verbs here. When I read the Bible, people, you know, do Bible studies, people always go, what's your, what's your coloring scheme? What's your, you know, the little system you use? And it's different every time. Whatever the Lord is teaching me in that moment or in that season or in that Bible study, sometimes I pay attention to the verbs. Sometimes I'm really focusing on the descriptive words. Other times it's both. It's both. But right now, I want you to notice the two verbs. You will understand the fear of the Lord and you're also finding something. You're finding the knowledge of God. And again, this is the result of what? The list he gave in verse 4, verse 3, verse 2, and verse 1. He goes, receive my words, treasure my commandments, make your ear attentive, incline your heart to understanding, call out for insight, raise your voice, seek it, search for it. Then, like those are all different ways of saying the same thing, go after wisdom. Then, you'll understand the fear of the Lord and you'll find the knowledge of God. Remember how he said, search for it as for hidden treasure? You're looking, when you search for something, you're intending to find something. Well, Solomon wants you to know what you'll find when you search for the hidden treasure of wisdom. Within wisdom is a deeper knowledge of God as well, right? Wisdom doesn't just present us application on how to fear the Lord or understanding of the fear of the Lord, but wisdom presents us deeper knowledge of God right? In order to walk accordingly. So the knowledge of God is the deep treasure, I believe, found within the wisdom Solomon's offering. It's more about who the wisdom is revealing to people. Wisdom is revealing a person. Wisdom reveals the character of a person. That's why he says, raise your voice, call out for it. It's it's as if God is inviting us through wisdom to come and know him so we can properly fear him and understand what it looks like and why we should live according to his commands. And we'll get to verse 6 and on in the next episode. Sorry, this one took a little longer. I was just trying to get the thing going. So thanks for bearing with me. I pray this blessed you, and we'll see you in the next Bible study workshop.